Hi guys, welcome. Today we will be making some candy treats out of fondant or gum paste, or in this case, modeling chocolate. I will be showing you how to make this super cool lollipops and candy because it is fall and I have a project at the end of the month, a surprise, I'm gonna be making a cornucopia cake and filling it all up with candy and fall leaves and other goodies. So today I am going to show you how to make the candy. Let's get started. Okay, so I am very excited to be trying out today this new Sad Nice modeling chocolate. I've been uh, wanting to find a project to try it with, so this is a perfect opportunity. I will be mixing, because I want it to dry a little firmer, I will be mixing some of this with some gum paste. Um, we also need some lollipop sticks, whatever size, length you want. We need, like I said, some gum paste and then food coloring, the colors that you want. I will be working with yellow, white, and orange for the candy corn, and those are very specific colors. But for the lollipops and the candy, you can choose whatever colors you want. So I also have the fondant smoother to press on them. Very important. That's it. Let's get to it. Okay, so for the popsicles, because I want them to stand up straight and not uh, tilt over, we will be mixing half gum paste and half of the modeling chocolate. I'm gonna do this for the orange, for the brown, and for the white. Those are the colors I have chosen for my project. And once I have those mixed in, mixed together, I will roll out. See, if you do this with only gum paste, or fondant, the fondant would not work as well, but you end up with a very dry product. That's why I like mixing it with the chocolate because it allows you to take your time while working. This would have been easier to add before I actually started rolling it out. But Now with one hand, I twist one way and with the other one, I twist the other way and this part, this part gets tricky because then we have to bend it and if it's dry, it cracks and it does not look pretty. Now we just leave it out to dry and we keep going. I am twisting the stick a little bit as I push it in and it's okay if it, if it pushes and makes a mar, a, what do you call it, like an indentation in the chocolate because regular candy does that. So you wanna allow these enough time to dry because as you can see right now, they are very flexible, but if you give it a few hours or overnight, then it will be much better. Okay, now, the candy. The candy is pretty much the same idea without a stick. So for the candy, we will roll out a thin piece of the white. Same idea, with one hand you twist one way, with the other one you twist the other way. Keep rolling the whole thing until it looks like they're very well attached and it looks like just one roll, not two put together. Okay, and then. I like to press against the, the table so that I have a bit of a sharper edge instead of completely round. And it also helps them the strands stick together, so that's it. Okay, so now that we have the two little candy bodies, we need to make the sides. So I have, uh, again, a little mixture of gum paste and modeling chocolate, and I will roll this out pretty thin. I will roll it out in my pasta maker, probably to a number three, and then we will shape it, cut them and shape them, so here. Okay. 
I rolled it out to a number two. So, cut a strip. We want to make it a, what is this, a trapezoid? Okay, so I have this shape, then I just twist it on one side, and then press and squeeze and cut off a little chunk off, because the purpose of that is that I will make a little indentation on the side of the candy and stick that in there. So I don't want it to be too long, but we want it to be long enough that it can actually go in there. And that's what's gonna make it stay. Once it dries out, then we will be able to pick the whole thing up. <laughs> Not like that, but Oh, see, now that will stay if I squeeze it again, but let's try that again. Then you will be able to just pick it up and it won't fall apart. Okay, so for the candy corn, I don't have to mix it with gum paste because, because I don't have to if I don't want to, but you can if you want. So we have the yellow, the orange, and the white, and we will start the same way as the other candy, we will roll out. I am making my candy corn giant because if I wanted it small, I guess I could just go buy store-bought ones and uh, my project I think will look cuter with giant. So giant it is. So I put the three colors together and this is so hard. We just cut and cut. The thing about this is that we can't do the reverse because candy corn does not come white on the bottom. It's always orange on the bottom. So those will be weird. That's it. We just cut them like that and then gently press, squeeze, shape, and mold all of that at the same time. Because it's the chocolate, it melts a little faster with the heat of my hand, so we don't want to over touch it. There. That's it. Candy corn. There we go. That's it. Fine. So I was just informed that candy corn is yellow on the bottom. So there, we will now redo the pretty candy corn to make it yellow on the bottom. Okay, so that's the candy corn in the right colors. Okay guys, we have our candy. Candy corn in the right color and candy corn in the weird color, but I decided it's fine because fall does weird things to corn, and if it's orange on the outside, it just means that it's old corn. So we're keeping it. Um, we also have all the popsicles and the candy. Everything's ready, drying out, ready for the cornucopia cake that I will be making right for Thanksgiving. So stay tuned for that. Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like my video and subscribe to my channel. Thanks.